Hey, uh, listeners, welcome back uh, to the Feminine Mistake Podcast. It's been a while, but we're back again. Um, <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Nicole. I'm your other host, Sarah. And uh, we have returning to join us for part two of our Descent discussion, uh, actor, writer, director, and horror expert, Melissa Knapp. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Melissa, who picked this film? Yes. That we've been talking well, I about. I didn't pick it, to be fair. Well, you did pick it. Though. I picked it out of a cup because I couldn't decide. <laughs> True. But it was your idea to watch it. And <laughs> yes, I think it was. It was an excellent <laughs> choice. Um, so we're going to get back into discussing the sec- our second half of the discussion. I don't know. Are discussing our second half? I don't know. Yeah, uh, you parse out some meaning there. But uh we're 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 we've got the second part of our discussion. But before we get into that, uh Sarah, what have you been watching? Uh it's a new show on Hulu, mm-hmm. only murders in the building. There's <gasps> only one episode left. Yes. Have you, have you seen it yet, Nicole? No, but I think you I think we've talked about this. Um this is the Ooh. one with Martin Short and Steve Martin, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it's also in my queue. I really want to watch. Do you like it? Uh, I thought it was really captivating at first. Yeah. And as episodes have gone on, it kind of falls apart. Oh. Um, Is it at least funny, though, consistently? It's funny, yes. Okay, good. Well, mm. it's different every episode. It really depends. Oof. Okay. There's, but there are some really, like, cute things okay. in the first few episodes. But, like, the whole the story of who dies and why it just doesn't really. So it's like a feel good murder show. Feel good murder show. Well, cause it's like a comedy, right? I mean, or is it sad? No, Uh, it's like the, what's the the tone. It's weird because it feels like they took what would be a season in a crime dra- dra- drama and just okay. put Steve Martin and Martin Short as like a bit on top of it. That's very strange. It's very strange. Okay. But this is like two guys and somebody dies in a building and they start a podcast, right? Yes. Okay. Called very, Only Murders in the Building. Right. It's a very cute concept. However, the murder is not cute. And it's, okay. like, a, it's like a real, not not a real story, but it's like a, like I said, it's like a what would be a crime drama, like the the uh, what is that show? CSI. Um, no, um, the <laughs> killing. Like oh God! Um, wow, that's intense. So but that like, f- but like comedy funny? on top. No, that doesn't make sense like, at all. How can you put comedy on top of that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I I could be wrong, but it just felt. The tone is unclear. The tone is yeah, changes seems. from episode to episode. Because I feel um, like a show like that, the tone should be more like like the movie Clue, where the murder is kind of zany. Right. Otherwise, it's like why? Like the, now the I'm movie. intrigued, and I and, really and, need and, to make and time. Even for Martin it. Short and Steve Martin's characters are like realistic. Like they have weird quirks, but they're mm. also like gra- grounded characters. Um, <laughs> okay. And um, they don't, I don't know, it just feels, it doesn't feel funny. And it's Selena Gomez is like wood. Oh, bummer. She's like, she has no express expression. She's like a monotone, expressionless. Mm. So this doesn't know. sound like a, a ringing endorsement. I mean, we've watched every episode so far and we've enjoyed it, but it's but not. But have you? great i mean i guess like the episode we watched today it was kind of like there was no dialogue and the whole episode whole episode was no 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 dialogue and it felt like after a point it was like there was it was like a bit okay it was like let's see if we can do an episode without dialogue okay and it was just like okay but why yeah so because like barry is a show that is Ser- has a serious tone but is funny because it's kind of like darkly funny mm-hmm. so like that works as a concept but it doesn't sound like maybe this does well it's bear i would also say barry is not very fun 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 fu- i think barry's funny. hilarious there's some hilarious moments really? in barry come on the guy the russian guy who like 
wants to be in it, who like is like, you know, thinks Barry's the coolest. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of like funny. The acting class is hilarious. I think it's because yeah. you can get out of the murder and go to the acting class. I think that helps a lot. But I don't know yeah, if you've I seen Barry, Melissa, probably... but Barry is fantastic. I have not. Oh, it's so as an actor, every person who's ever taking an act, have t- anyone who's ever taken an acting class must see Barry. It's like oh, a requirement. Okay. It's so good. I'll have to give it a go. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, all right. So only murders in the building. Uh, Melissa, what have you I been watching? Watch. Oh, I'm just saying I would still watch. Just you would because still it's watch. Weird. It's weird. It's like, weird. I'm okay. Seeing- Everyone loves Steve Martin and Martin Short. Like, it's true. Why not? It's true. Um, Melissa, uh, what have you been watching? Um, I just rewatched season two of Creep Show on Shutter, Greg oh, Nicotero's version, because yes. season three already started. Okay. Um, and I haven't watched season three yet because I was rewatching season oh, two because I love I it. I know somebody worked um, in the editorial department on Creep I, Show. I have we, seen several Atlanta we grew up actors. together. We grew, the editor. Yeah. Oh really? Yes, there's a guy who works in the editorial department on Creep Show. We grew up we grew up together. Our moms were friends. And when we were kids, they used to take us to the movies together. Oh, that's so and, cool. And uh we didn't see each other for like 20 years. And then he messaged me on Facebook and was like, "Hey, like I remember you. Do you remember me?" And like then we were chatting and we both found out we're both editors, which is so weird. Wow. We're like that's so strange. Like both of us became editors. Anyway, sorry. Sidebar. Yeah. You continue. So yeah, uh, Creep Show on Shutter. I am enjoying. You remember Tyner is in <gasps> Creep Show. Yes. She's in it, and she gives like a beautiful performance I in saw this that. episode. Yes. Right? Yes. So oh, good. So heartbreaking. Sarah, did you watch Tyner's performance in Creep Show where she's like the sick mom? I've never seen Creep Show. <gasps> oh, Tyner was really good. And I I just saw her like stuff. I didn't see the whole episode, mm-hmm. but. And my horror crush, Greg Nicotero, is in it. I just yeah, kind of want to drink bourbon and brush his hair. I mean, he's uh, got with gorgeous him, locks. He has gorgeous hair. I know that's super yeah. creepy, and I'm no. so sorry. I mean, I get <laughs> he it. is awesome. I get but it. yeah, so uh, that's kind of just what I've been watching. Um, so I started watching Star Wars Visions, mm-hmm. which is on Disney Plus, and it is anime Star Wars stories. They're not really like canon, but basically like they took a bunch of anime studios and they were like, make a Star Wars story. And they each made, and each episode is I'd say between, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes long. They kind of vary. Uh, I've only watched the first three. Fucking awesome. Like I'm not into anime. Like as a, like I just, just, I'm not saying I don't like it. I just mean like, it's just not a thing that I'm like, I'm not, a part of like it's not a huge part of my fandom you know like I don't there aren't a bunch of anime shows that I'm into or whatever but the animation is incredible the stories are so cool it's like a really fresh take on Star Wars but with like a lot of the things that we like like you can see them kind of like um remixing certain things like there's a, a scene in the third episode that reminds me a lot of a big like a big centerpiece scene in the last jedi and there's a scene in the first episode where there's like a fight a lightsaber fight that has a lot of uh uh parallels to the lightsaber fight at the end of revenge of the sith where obi-wan kenobi and anakin are fighting it's really good fresh take each episode is a little different what's it Um, called it's called star wars visions and it's on disney plus I feel like I'm going to bring it up to Brian. Cause, oh, yeah. Brian should definitely But I bet watch he's it. watched it. So, it's um, so it'll good. just be me watching because he's probably watched it. But I'm going to try it. Um, well, they're short, too. So I feel like he could watch it again. Uh, but, yeah, it was uh, it's really fucking good. So I recommend that shit to everybody, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. I feel like it's good to breathe new life into uh, stories that we love. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's good to get a fresh take on it, you know. Um, so yeah, I recommend that. All right, you guys ready to get back at oh, Albus is here. Nope. Evie. Oh no, that's Evie. Evie, yeah. Evie, do you want to talk about the descent? She Apparently. wants to lick that microphone, <laughs> that's for sure. She- Can you not? It's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Evie's here. So let's Evie's here and ready to join the party. So let's get into the second half of our discussion of the film, The Descent. Yes. The house is a mess, Jack. The kids are a mess, Jack. You're a mess, Jack. You have been a total bitch ever since you came to New York. You seem so distant. Let's just do it, man. You look stupid and rich. Stupid and stupid and rich. Fascist. All right, let's get into it. 
my by the way, my second note is Juno. What a cunt. <laughs> She is right. absolutely. Uh, she leaves the fucking map behind on purpose because it's not a cave. Like there's no, she, there's, like, there's nothing in that. Book. She's not using the book. Yeah. Which, if I were her friend uh, Rebecca, I would be like, "Why did you make me read the fucking book in the first place?" Right. If we weren't even going to go in the cave, she's a bad friend. She is a bad she's friend. A bad she friend. is a bad fucking friend. Also, um, it decides to go into a cave that no one's ever been into before. Because she wants to name it. Because she wants to discover it. Discover it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anyone who goes hiking or or anything like that. I don't that, want to discover sort of shit. That doesn't actually put in their own, their actual plan with whoever they're, support, they're reporting yes. to. Yes. Like, that's not a thing people do. Do you, like uh, it's a very irresponsible. It's very well, they so, like did that report. out of care. Yeah, but even Juno, then I feel like okay, Juno, you know, you think it was out should of have crazy. It's out of character. I mm-hmm. think it was a little out of character because she is adventurous, and I think she would have put that in mm-hmm. no matter what. Yeah, it's um, something that like even if she was like not telling them where they were going, she would have at least told someone right they were going because there. nobody's been in there like that just seemed a bit odd and out of character so it okay. sounds like something that someone would make a decision someone would make who their brain hadn't fully developed yet like mm-hmm. they hadn't she's developed very intelligent of... yeah she's like yeah nobody's been in this cave i thought we could explore it it's like what the fuck <laughs> i don't want to die down here right. um here's what i'll say about juno though i think this role was I think this character could have been fucking insufferable uh, because Mm -hmm. she makes so many bad decisions because she is so selfish. Um, But the actor played her like she cared too much about everything and everybody. Yeah. Like the actor, I'm telling you, watch it again. She, the look on her face when Holly goes down that hole The look on her face when, you know, Sarah keeps wandering off and she has to keep bringing her back. Like, she is selfish, but also cares a lot about all the other people in the group. But she's Mm -hmm. her but her decisions are selfish and it leads to everyone else getting hurt and and killed. Right. The look on her face when she puts the spike into Beth by accident, like all of these things make that character have dimensions that Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure were there in the writing, Mm -hmm. uh, but are there in the casting. The actor is like, I'm going to put dimensions in this fucking character. Watch me. Well, or Neil Marshall cast somebody he knew that would give her dimensions. Like she's not explicitly Mm -hmm. saying these things. It's, it's in the performance. And I feel like if we're looking at how the actor played her, that Juno decided to go into an undiscovered cave because she's trying to recapture this extreme female sports bonding that they had so that maybe Sarah will forget about everything that happened and rejoin the group. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like that is, if you want to pick a motivation, that feels like what the actor was playing to me. Um, and they did sort of talk about it a bit, but I definitely think the actor looking because she could have just been like a badass killing monsters character, but she had a lot of empathy. She had a lot of fear, like you could see the fear. And I feel like that was really necessary to give that character something beyond like Juno. What a cunt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that took her made her character much more interesting. Um, OK. OK. Much so they more go, hard to understand. I'm sorry. Much more har, har, harder to to understand. It's like if you claim to care about these people, why would you do these things? Us, uh, because people make bad decisions. Um, and Juno makes bad decisions, but she's not the only one. They all make bad decisions. Uh, mostly Juno and then Holly running through the cave without looking where she's going, which also <sighs> felt a what? little, I mean, I know they set it up by saying she's adventurous, but it feels like if you're, she has, if you're used to doing sports like this, she does have a like line at the beginning in the cabin where she's like, don't think about it. Just do it kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you can tell she, she literally doesn't think shit through. Are these actually 23 year old boys? 
Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think there are women that are also also impulsive. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Um uh you know, the 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 fact that even small things, like the fact that Rebecca um clips one of the uh lines mm-hmm. to an old hook. Yeah. Like all of the little tiny bad decisions that lead to everybody, everything going wrong. It's like everyone yeah. is making bad decisions. But she, can we talk about how awesome she is? Oh my god, a badass! I told Brian as I'm we're watching it, I'm like, I'd die right there, first hand out, and I tried yeah. to put my weight dead. No, <laughs> I would have fell to my death. I I barely have the upper body strength to like do a push up. Okay, like I could not. Um, I want to talk about the monsters. I love the monsters. I love them too. Why do you love the monsters? Well, probably for a very different reason than you. <laughs> it's because of the how they actually look. Oh, the design is fantastic. The design on these monsters is so freaking like phenomenal. Dollar. I mean, they look like piggy yes. elf cave but dwellers. But they also have a society. Humanoid. They have a society. Yeah. At one point, I think Sarah kills one of the children. Mm-hmm. And the mom comes out and is pissed. And I was like, yeah, this is oh. great. Yeah. yeah. I love how uh, when they kill the monsters, all the sound it's effects. Gooey. It's yes. gooey. Like you can get a feel for like what this monster feels like. I mm-hmm. love, mm-hmm. I love everything about them. Sarah does not. Uh, Sarah, I- you <laughs> said you would not. You said this movie could work without the monsters. I am not. A monster person, like okay, in, fair. That's not something that scares me. Like I've n- I've never been a liker of movies that where the the horror is a monster or a horror okay. is someone not a hu- human or not. So you think humans like, are scary? Humans are scary, but not humans who just mindlessly kill people like a machine. Like, like in Halloween yeah, or yeah. Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, I well, like. Freddy is scary, guys. Come on. He's got I like eyes for fingers. Psych law, 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 horror, not physical horror. Okay. Like, physical horror okay. isn't scary to me at all. Okay. So, you wanted more personal drama and people getting lost and breaking their legs and shit and starving to death. I, I'm just like, where would it go? That's what. I mean, they, that, that would Whoa. be the next thing would be for them to starve, I think, if they were not going to. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like manipulation and like. Okay. And crazy shit. Like, like, I don't know. I guess like the drama between them. Yes. Um, was more compelling to me than being chased by actual mo- mo- monsters. Okay. I get that. Let me put the, let me posit this to you though. Um. I think to get to what I think the monsters stand in for, um, I need we, we we need to talk about the cave. Yeah, is so what when we talk about the descent, which is what this is called. Obviously, they're literally descending into a cave. But what other things do you th- like? Does that mean anything to you other than just going into a cave? Um, when you hear the descent, you also it brings up the idea the descent into madness. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah the descent into like your psyche, like the, mm-hmm. the re- 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 relationships between the char- char- mm-hmm. characters, the grief, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the pain. And I think anytime you go into darkness, you are forced to confront your fears. Mm-hmm. 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 I also think there's an aspect of literally going to hell and back that's mm-hmm. um, going on here. Um, and, and at first, so I started thinking about this. I, I hate to be at like, one of the I had to be that guy but as they're repelling down the first cave I was like well that looks very womb like um Mm -hmm. and I was like I don't know if this is gonna pay off because caves are often used that way but I was like I don't know if this is gonna pay off as like a rebirth kind of metaphor but there are several moments where I think that is what's exactly what's going on like when she comes up from the water or or blood or what or goo or the the world's grossest hot tub is what i was thinking of it as um i mean it's grosser than the howard johnson's hot tub if you know what i'm saying um (laughs) 
So when she comes out of that water and she doesn't burst out of it, she like rises very slowly. And when she comes out of that water, she is a different person. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah. And Sarah has been maybe uh, not pushed around, but you can tell that she's like keeping things inside. She's not like expressing the true range, except for that moment in the hospital with Beth. She's not expressing the range of her grief or her anger or any of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like once she gets out of that water, that the rage is driving her, the, 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 desire to survive the the survival instinct kicks in she's like killing she's like putting her thumbs in the sockets of these things and killing them right and then at the end when she comes up out of the moss and is like gasping i'm like Mm -hmm. there's like there's no bigger obvious you know imagery than birth going on here like that is so like she's pushing herself out she's gasping for air i mean you she's practically coming out of the earth's vagina if you know what i'm saying yeah (laughs) it looked very much like that to me yeah right so i think the whole that whole thing is about rebirth now getting to the monsters let's think about this for a second juno takes them down into the cave and because of her poor decisions these monsters start to tear the group apart. Mm -hmm. And that is also kind of what's happened in their life, right? Mm -hmm. Juno, I'm not saying Juno caused the death of Sarah's family, but there was some betrayal going on there. And that was a part of what was going on in the car. And when that accident happened, then the group fractured, it seems like. Mm-hmm. So it feels like, to me, the monsters are the sort of the darkness, the grief, the rot that is inside of this group. Mm-hmm. And so to me, they mean more than just creatures, although they weren't yeah. great as creatures. But to me, they mean more than just creatures. And so Sarah, at the end, is then now making a decision do I try to help this person and and try to lift get her out of here with me or do I let these I do I let the rot take her? Mm-hmm. And that and her decision is I would rather you die down here than mm-hmm. be in my life anymore. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know if that changes your feeling about the monsters, but I feel like they're more than just creatures. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely appreciate that analysis. Um that's definitely what they represent um for sure i mean it uh, just makes them for a more yep. compelling horror film mm-hmm. to have monsters and fighting and a gore and stuff yeah. yeah i would say whatever you do don't watch the second one uh i <laughs> let's hold that to the end because i want to hear about it because i had thought about it i was like should i watch the second one um probably watch. very bad i'm gonna guess probably like blair witch 2 level bad um, ooh, the Blair Witch Project. We should watch that sometime. Um, Sarah, you've seen the Blair Witch Project, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Who hasn't? Anyway, um, so anyway, uh okay, let's move on. Um Do you have another do you have something on your list you want to talk about, Sarah? I'm working my way down here. Hmm. Something I mean, I we didn't cover. I think we're going along pr- pr- okay. pretty well. Um. So, oh, I the thing I want to talk about with the monsters, because I also thought just like if you take away the metaphor, just as a monster in a cave, I feel like they it was like the perfect thing. Be- yeah. Because they can't see, right? Which mm-hmm. makes sense because they live underground. They hunt by sound. It seems like they can't smell either, which mm-hmm. means that we get all these really great shots of the monster being super close to them, mm-hmm. but not but, and them having to be really quiet and not move. And I think and and literally like dripping just like goo yeah. on top of She's their like, heads. She he like it. touched Sarah's head. He had his yeah. like hand on her head. Yes. I so I love the amazing. shots where they're like up on the ceiling mm-hmm. and like one of the characters will move and it'll be there. And I'm like, oh I love yes. that so much. Yeah. I love all the I again, it was a lot of like little reveals here and there. Com- obviously mm-hmm. com- combined with the gore, which you know was very visceral, but 
to me, the scariest thing parts of the movie are when they're in the cave and you know a monster is going to come and you're just waiting for it to happen. Like that was yeah. in part of the scariest parts for me. I also love that the monsters go straight for the like the jugular. Yes, like they know the how to kill. Yes. Like I just love that. It, it, they're so beastly, but they're humanoid, but they're. I don't know. There's just something wonderful about that. I appreciated that very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, they were some solid fucking movie monsters. Mm -hmm. um, I got a couple more things on my list. M Melissa, is there anything you wanted to talk about that we haven't gotten to yet? It's something you want to talk about as well is that first tunnel before the collapse. Yes, the claustrophobia. That, that oh, is when all the shit God. starts. Yes. I, Yeah. If there was a movie that I yelled at more than this one, I don't know what it is. I can't believe Sarah got that far into the cave without having a panic attack, frankly. Yeah. I can't believe everyone should have been having a I was having a panic attack watching it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I know. don't know, do these women go in do all of the women go it in caves? It seems like, like it. That's what they said. No. Hmm. I mean, I would not go into a cave with people that had not been in a cave before. I wouldn't. I also would have been like, if I had seen Sarah having that reaction, I would have been like, okay, I'm going to take her out. I'm going to take her home. Yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. Turn yeah. around. Like, well, they we could have, because the cave started to collapse. Well, it started to, yeah. but I'm just saying that like right before then, it would have been like, let's just scooch you back out. Um, you're not ready to do something this extreme. You know, if I didn't have a map or I hadn't looked at a map prior to this, I would not have went. Like I'm that person that's like, I need to see the map. I yeah, need to know the route. I wouldn't have gotten none of these women them. even except for one. But then she got We're in there, and now. I'm like, well, you should automatically know this isn't the cave. Yeah, I feel yeah. like if it's that tight, I need to see. I need to see a map. And, and they're Show that me experienced. The map, Juno. And they're like, okay, let's find how to keep going. Well, you should know. Well, I guess Juno. <laughs> Why are we finding Juno's it? Juno's <laughs> always the trip planner. And yeah. I guess Rebecca had read the book and was like, you know. I wish they would have just set that up better as to why no one. Why no one wanted to know where the map to, was. To, to like, yeah, or look at it or have looked at it the night before or something. I don't also, know. I'm not a caver. I'll be the first to admit that. But like. And at some point, they see marks on the cave walls where the other yeah, cavers were. Yeah, the very were. beginning. In a cave, wouldn't there be marks just like if you were hiking, like to help you to help mark the trail? Isn't that if it was a mm, like if it was a, I, if it I'm was not, supposed to know. be a tourist trap, like they said Borum Caverns was? Yeah, wouldn't there be uh, some kind of trail markings? I don't know. Tweet at us at Fem Mistake Pod if you've been caving before. <laughs> We need to know. Because I feel like there would be some kind of trailblaze, like a blaze for them to follow. Something. Uh, like you would on a high. So I feel like I would have, if I were Rebecca, I'd be like, I am i don't see anything pointing to this tiny hole you want me to crawl into. <laughs> I don't know if I well, should Holly go. was like, Holly was right on point though. Like she's like, I'm in first. All of it. And that just fits so well for her character. Yeah, I, I agree. That. I agree. I think once they got into the cave, even though the setup of the character development was a little sparse, once they got into the cave, they felt very dimensional to me. And I began mm -hmm. to see their separate personalities. It was like once the director had something to do for them to do actively, then it became then... clear that who is who, right? Um, I really loved the really. I know we didn't talk about the sisters, but I really loved their relationship a lot. Um, yeah. I didn't in the again in the cabin. I thought it was like a little cheesy because like she's like I'm so proud of my little sister because she's in med school, and I'm like no one says that. Um, but <laughs> I know sisters that are that cheesy. Close, I guess so. I don't know. It just <laughs> felt like a thing people say at the beginning of a script to let you know that those yeah. people are sisters. But mm -hmm. once they were in the cave, the way that she. The way that they took care of each other and protected each other and the way Sam mm -hmm. would jump in when someone was injured and take and care of Sam them. Died. And mm -hmm. yes, and the way that, you know, Sam got upset and was trying to climb across and her sister was on the other side going, Sam, baby, look at me, look at me. You got to come back. Like that all was very uh, emotional for me as a sister. Yeah. yeah. So um anything uh, i got a couple more things you guys got something else maybe from the middle here because i'm my notes are getting towards the end i think oh yeah i just wanted to say like when they went through that tunnel mm -hmm. i love how um 
they filmed that scene because you really felt that claustrophobia and mm-hmm. panic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have been able to film that scene. Like, I'm pretty sure I they built a stage. Like, I've had yeah, a scene. Yeah, it's like open. Yeah, I haven't. Even if I had just stuck my head into a yeah. little thing, like, that would have been hard. I'm very claustrophobic. I am pho- too. Okay. I am too. Yeah. That would have been hard for me. But yeah, Sarah. So that was just beautifully oh. filmed, I thought. Oh, yes. It was gorgeous and scary and terrifying. Mm-hmm. And like, the Beth, when they had Beth, it, it was almost like a point of view shot where Beth comes in and the light is shining in the camera and you can't really see her face uh, from the headlamp. Yeah, and the amount of time they spent in that scene mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was just made you just it just kept building and building and yeah. building. I'm like, just fucking move, but they don't, and they just hold it in there. I loved that. I just thought that was shot so well. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I believe it's been a while since because I watched the making of. I think back when, like a couple years ago, I think when I watched it again. Um, and I'm pretty sure that they actually built this on a stage, Sarah. They built all the caves on stuff on a stage, and it was almost like you know when you look at like a an ant hill, like a, a like an mm-hmm. ant farm, and there's little tunnels, and you can see them through the glass. They basically built a bunch of tunnels that were open um, on a sound stage, and that's kind of how they filmed all that stuff. Yeah. I know what we need to talk 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 about that we've okay. kind of like mentioned briefly, but we yeah. didn't really discuss yeah. is how what's her name? Is it Beth or Rebecca? Be- Beth's death. Or Beth's death. Yeah, we should talk about that for sure. Yeah. Was was that on on your list? No, let's let's do it. Let's I mean, yes oh, and no. Yeah. I was just thinking that as well, that we didn't really properly mm-hmm. talk about that. Um so, so- yeah, um Ju- Juno is just killed. A monster, her first monster. So all mm-hmm. hell is broken loose, and they've all split yeah. up. Um, yeah, and she's Juno. Yeah. Has happened in real life, I feel. Yeah, Ju- and the Juno monsters hears- dragged Holly oh. away. Mm-hmm. And Juno hears something behind her and whips around with her her pick. Yeah. Um, and just without even thinking, just like a, a knee jerk reaction, uh, stabs the pick through Beth's neck because uh, Beth is yeah. right there. Oof. So, I mean, that imagine killing me. your I best love, friend like that. I like, love but that. also, what a one terrible accident, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But two, why why wouldn't you stay till she's dead or just finish it? Because that would, I wouldn't leave someone. Dying it was crazy that she left her there. But I mean, Juno, I think that's meant to sort of indicate Set Juno's how- level of selfishness I guess uh, yeah. for, like, so her- she, she runs away like mm-hmm. when when right. Paul died she ran so it's like yeah. she you know, can't like- deal with the grief of it maybe mm-hmm. yeah. um, but still it was that's pretty intense to leave your friend just like fucking dying on the floor and of a cave like, and it's like your this. fault she's literally like- your fault and she's reaching for her that was heartbreaking mm-hmm. yeah yeah um, and then of course Sarah finds her later we didn't talk yeah, about which, this, but I really loved the oh. convention of the camera with the infrared light. Uh, that was yeah. a really cool um, way to um, give us a look at things without really giving us a look at things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Sarah does eventually find her. We, I think we did talk about this, though, about her finding yeah. out about Paul and then yeah. having to kill. I don't know. Could you kill your yeah. friend if they asked you to? I don't know that I could. Not like I mean, that. I think in that kind of serious situation, I think you you maybe would at least stay there with them. Because I feel like I would be like, let's cuddle. Yeah. Let's cuddle. Because you don't want to I, watch I anyone suffer yeah. that long. But I also like, could not thank bash. Thank you. I'm glad that you wouldn't bash my head in, Nicole. Well, thank it, you. But, I mean, if you asked if you me, asked. she asked. <laughs> Even if you asked, I would be like, you know what? I'm not really great at this. But when Chris, I don't think I could when Chris, bash. when Chris comes back, maybe we can ask him. He can might you inject me with some, something? Like if I, I think had a you needle. just suffocate them because I don't think I could bash anyone. But what would you heading. suffocate them with? Like your hands. like your butt? I don't know. Like there's no like <laughs> gonna sit on <laughs> your sit on your face. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I can't. I don't think I'd be able to like, bash them. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't. I don't know if a hand would do it. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Definitely the butt. Definitely well, there's sit so on many jokes right I would there. Sit on your face won't do it. Sarah, if okay. you were if you had been stabbed in the neck with a pick, I would suffocate my your face with my butt in a second. <laughs> okay. Me too. <laughs> Just for a merciful merciful death. 
I can't oh eat you with but I will sit on your face. <laughs> Great. I just want to be suffocated in boobs. Okay, um, I'm going to no. go out motor Dealer, voting. Dealer's oh choice. All the way. Dealer's choice. I got some. I got some for you right here, Melissa. <laughs> this went. This went downhill. <laughs> this, this, is, is, <laughs> this is. This is actually what happens when a man directs a horror movie. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Okay. I. Here's what I'd like to talk about. So in the end. Um, oh, one thing I hadn't mentioned that I, before I get to the end here, um, is that one of the things I really do like about this movie is I love a movie that has a bunch of characters that are all stuck in one place together. Uh, the thing is one of my favorite movies and I've mm. always wanted oh. to write like a, not a female version of the thing, but something that's like that where you have a bunch of women in a place and there's like a, a sort of a, you know, some Con- pers- conflict or mistrust and 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 this uh extreme violent situation that everybody's trying to get out of uh i'd love to write something like that and i feel like this gets pretty close uh and mm-hmm. i don't again yeah. i feel like they spent more time setting the characters up really clearly in the thing than they do in this movie yeah and so i think mm-hmm. it would have maybe been able to reach that level a little bit more although the thing has really amazing special effects as well uh especially for its time but uh i think this gets pretty close to being that sort of uh dream that i that i had or have um anyway in the end uh Mm -hmm. only juno and sarah after sarah goes through her transformation into complete slippery badass right um is she covered in blood is it gooey is it goo is it slime is it no it's like blood it looks like like, oh yeah i think there's definitely blood there i'm gonna tell you guys after we're done because it's in the second one oh um but i have a feeling i know what that is and describe um, it no you see it um but we'll talk about that was was that the monster secretions it was that the monster's personal toilet or Mm -hmm. (gasps) ew uh, there's a scene it, in the second oh, one where they're no. in that goo and they don't know what it is and then a monster comes and puts his butt over and then shits in it. Okay. So I think it's I think that's what that Will Marshall was in not involved one. in the second movie, was he? I don't know, but it is I refuse not as good. I refuse to accept that as canon. I refuse. I ex- I refuse. It just wasn't as good. I refuse. Um anyway, in the end, it's Sarah and Juna left. And Mm -hmm. I do really like, I, you know, call me a sucker, but I did really like the badass women fighting with torches and shit. That was awesome. I was excited about that. And then ultimately, as we've kind of alluded to, Sarah is, there's, they're kind of what they, what they think might be the end of the tunnel. And Sarah, uh, sort of reveals to Juno that she knows because she shows her the necklace which I remember in the theater, I was like, what does that necklace mean? Like, it t- I didn't really catch up until afterwards because, like, it, you have to really pay attention. And because she says, like, Paul said, love every day. And that's what's written uh-huh. on the thing. And I was like, yeah. I don't really understand what's going on. It was a little hard for me the first time I saw it. But after a couple times, I got it. Anyway, um, so she reveals that she knows. And then she clubs Juno in the leg with the pick. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, so my question is: Do you think it would have been more poetic if she had got her in the neck? Uh, I like the leg because it's like I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to make it real hard for you to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did Juno deserve it? Hell yes. You think so? Mm-hmm. Would you have been able to do this to somebody even if they no. had betrayed you in this way? No. But in mo- in movie land, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, she. Sh- she just des- des- deserved it. She was a okay. terrible per- 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 person. Okay. All right. Melissa, did Juno deserve it? I mean, I like to say yes, but I don't know. At the end of the day, when you're fighting for survival, I don't know that anybody deserves that. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. Um, um, I'm going to say no. I feel like it was like very calculated. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to see Sarah coming apart a little more than that because it was like all she didn't earn that. I don't think she just didn't earn it to me. Also, I think that and I've seen them do this in zombie movies before 
or in The Walking Dead, where a character has to make a choice. It's like there's so many of them that it's either me or you. You know, and if I if I leave you behind, they'll get you and I'll be able to get away. I feel like, first of all, a longer confrontation, perhaps, about Paul that leads to the creatures discovering them and be them being overrun. And then Sarah has to make a choice to to injure Juno so that she can get away. I feel like that makes a little bit more sense. This felt very cold blooded, which maybe that mm-hmm. was the point, but in a movie where every where the relationships were pretty grounded, it seemed yeah. kind well, of this, extreme. This to play, me. play play plays into my theory that when she emerges from the poop pool. Let's not um, call it that. Let's okay, just I'm call sorry, it the bloody let's just call slime. It, let's call it the menstrual <laughs> pool. We'll just call it the, the menstrual, menstrual pool. Okay, let's just call it the menstrual pool. So when she emerges from the menstrual pool, she seems like I said, it's kind of like the pornified version You're right. of the her. anger and porn. So this, this, the the moment that she she does that, you know, falls in line with that. You're right. You're um, right. Yeah, it just felt like whoa, shit. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. she did some bad stuff, but I don't know if I could have done like I. She like made a choice. She was like, I hope you fucking right. die, bitch. That was you know crazy. What's, what's so fun, funny is when that happened, I was like, oh, you just got her in the leg. Like, I was like, I wanted her to get her in the neck. Okay, like, so <laughs> don't get Sarah mad because she will <laughs> right. flip your ass in the neck and leave you in a cave. I won't. I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't. I mean, but I'm just saying. That's my, always interesting choice like my, when people are in that. Yeah, like, I just, like, I really, really, really did not like Juno. Mm-hmm, her character mm-hmm. and i thought okay. she made terrible decisions and mm-hmm. i wanted to see her dead like i just okay. really sarah was out. She was a shitty character sarah was out like for her. blood i feel out. like i just wanted her to have like an accident <laughs> at the end and sarah didn't have to choose to like i like the choice i like i like i just needed i like that it would have been nicer yeah i think it would have been Great. I don't know. I just think her like ice or not ice. I I call it an ice pick. I don't know what it is. I just think her like hitting her in the leg just seemed a little out of character for for her. I it was know. out of character. I mean, I know her, that yeah. she's like lost her mind at this point. I f- and in survival, but like if the person would have been injured and she had to make that choice to leave them or help them, I just think that would have been more interesting. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, I mean, that's what she did to Beth, but yeah. also. I think that what we're meant to feel is that Sarah has been reborn as this like mm-hmm. per- take no prisoners sort of, you know, yeah. I'm going to survive no matter what. But that's the thing is like, I would have believed it if it was about her survival and, but mm-hmm. it really wasn't, it was more about like revenge or something. And it just felt very mm-hmm. extreme. Revenge. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I would have believed it if, it was part of this rebirth as like, I'm a survivor. I feel like she comes out of that cave, a survivor, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, she does. Um, And so I wanted some, I wanted there to be more of a reason why she had to make that choice and not just, I'm mad at you because you had an affair with my husband. That's not enough for me. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, you guys could fight it out in the parking lot afterwards, you know? Right. Um, Okay, uh, so let's talk. I want to talk about the alternate ending, but let's continue with like the American ending first. Yeah. Um, please go and ahead. I love this ending, mm-hmm. and I interpreted it as the UK version because of the nightmare lighting, which I like to call when she has those nightmares, okay. the lighting changes and it's it like does. that darker tone. Yeah. And that's what the end in the car changed yeah. to. So I yeah. already thought yeah. she was still in the she cave. She was still in the cave. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I saw it as she'll be ha- ha- haunted by oh, Juno. That's what I thought. She'll be up in the world and she'll see Juno because she left her there. I felt die. like yeah. it was one more thing for her to be traumatized by. Yeah. Mm, here's another yeah, thing I'm going to be a here's another trauma as a survivor. Here's another trauma I'm going to be carrying around with me. That's what I took yeah. it to. Yeah. Me. If they hadn't changed that lighting to that nightmare lighting mm. that she has when she actually has nightmares, it's kind of that dark. I would have thought 
yeah, this is she's just going to be haunted by this. But because they changed that lighting to that darker mm-hmm. tone, I was like, oh, well, she never actually when she fell into that cave, she never yeah. actually got that, out. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you need the Juno jump scare at the end. Um, I mm-hmm. don't think you need it. I, it feels like a really sort of American audiences, like a, 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 a Friday the 13th style jump scare at the end. And I don't think it you need fit. it. Like, I think that um, it really could have just ended with her like hyperventilating in the car. And I would have been like, Absolutely. fuck yeah, like she got out, yeah. but she's never going to be the same. That was all. Um, that was good enough for me. I'm going to advocate for the jump scare because like that was okay. the only scary part of the, mo- the, the <laughs> for movie you. for me. <laughs> Like that was like, but for me it was the 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 met the metaphor for 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 fear of always being haunted by yes. this oh, okay. person. Like that was that scary to me. Mm. Um, I just want you to know that if I go first, I will haunt you pleasantly. Okay, good. Like I will like very. I will announce my presence so as not to startle you, and I will never walk in on you while you're changing because that's rude i make no such promises (laughs) melissa's like i will haunt the (laughs) shit out of you i'm gonna be eating my um ghost popcorn watching you (laughs) oh no popcorn i love it Ah, (laughs) Um, jumping around corners (laughs) Ah! (laughs) oh melissa Uh, (laughs) so yeah so i i want to talk now let's talk i'd like to talk about the alternate ending oh wait no no no. Mm -hmm. before we do what so actually we did talk about that what does this movie leave you with i think we did kind of address that i guess that she's a survivor but she'll always be haunted by yet this Mm -hmm. uh, another traumatic event i think that's what the movie does leave us with uh in the original in the you in the u.s version so the original ending you huh is I that a message live, we want live, live, or live with that tra- tra- trauma? I'm just well, I mean, me she's been living like, with the I... trauma of her. It's like Beth said, the worst thing that could have happened to you has already happened. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'd be, I'd be traumatized by that cave experience, but to be honest, like nothing, I, I could not imagine a worse pain than losing your child. I could not imagine it. I cannot think of a worse pain than that. Um, I don't think there probably is. So but, yeah. the worst thing that's happened to her already has happened to her and she survived. She's still here. Mm-hmm. Um, whether she'll have regrets about what she did to Juno later, I don't know. That would have been a better Absolutely. second movie, honestly, than whatever the fuck you're going to tell us about. Um, ah, but uh, I wish you guys had seen it. So the original ending, mm-hmm. which was in the UK, and then when they brought it over to the US, they changed it because they thought it was too sad. Too much for the U.S. Too much for the U.S. Uh, they The original ending, of course, and we've all seen it, is uh, that at the end, when she falls down on the pile of bones, she doesn't crawl up to the surface. She actually hallucinates. The torchlight becomes the light of the birthday candles. So we see the birthday again, and we see her daughter sitting with her in the cave, and she smiles while the creature's are like killing Juno in the distance, I assume. Yeah. And eventually her, Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. So she all, it's like, she kind of gives up on survival, I think is sort of the, uh, Mm -hmm. that's how I interpret it. I don't know how you guys interpreted it. Which I, yeah, that's how I totally thought it was going to go until I watched the second one. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I interpreted it. The the alternate ending of the UK uh, version is, yeah, she's, she's fucked. (laughs) <laughs> no, or she's like, just chosen she's chosen to just to stay, stay there, there. Um, she's chosen to give in to her grief mm-hmm. but I also saw a version where they film they show the entire thing of her getting mm-hmm. out and dry and dry 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 driving and then they cut back to her on I the think, floor of the cave Sarah that was them I saw that one too because I was like is this a different one that was them cutting the two endings together. Like a YouTuber mm. cut the the two endings are different. There's two endings and they're two discrete endings and someone cut it together like that, but that's not how it was released. Okay. Yeah. And also I think um in the UK version in the close up you see her but the birthday cake and the daughter, mm-hmm. but in the wide version the cake and the daughter are gone and it's just the torch. So that's she's right. A, so she's, she's hallucinating. hallucinating. Yes, all of that. And yeah. the camera pulls back super duper far super to show wide. that she is not getting out. Like it's no, very she clear. Is in, she is in the deep cave. in the cave. She's not going to get out. Yeah. Um, I which ending did you guys prefer? I personally preferred the UK version. 
I found the UK version to be more emotionally affecting to me. Yes. I cried because yeah, I feel it, like if I were her, I'd be like, I have nothing. I have no one. Everything I love is gone. There is no reason for me to live. I, 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 that, that's how it felt to me. Um, yeah. and I don't know if that's a, that's not a positive ending, but it did feel, no, but it felt fitting. It felt fitting for the story. It did. It, it did. did. Yeah. No, it does make more sense for her to think about her daughter than to think about Juno. Juno. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Also, Absolutely. it's a payoff for all the times that she's heard the daughter in the cave. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I think a, a, a more, a, a, I think it, perhaps a third ending that doesn't exist, but maybe should could have or should have, <laughs> would be that as she's crawling up the cave, she hears her daughter again. And instead of turning around to investigate, she decides to, to crawl forward and leave the cave. That would have me- meant something to me as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would have been like... Letting go of some of the trauma. Letting go mm-hmm. of of be, be and making the choice to survive. I I'm not saying what about I don't an like, ending where she hears her daughter and then turns around and goes back to goes back or that back I mean in the cave. I I think that I like I I mean I found the ending with the daughter to be more emotionally affecting, mm-hmm. but I but a metaphor but at, philosophically I like the ending where she chooses to be a survivor and instead. I meta- philosophically, I prefer that as a as a thing that you leave the audience with to say, yeah, she's been through all this because then otherwise, in a way, it's like, what's the point of going through all this if we're just going to end up in the same place? Right. Mm-hmm. And she kind of has that like rebirth at exactly. the end where she's coming out of the earth, which I liked. I yeah. just didn't feel like we needed the Juno jump scare. I felt that was we cheesy. Didn't. I didn't feel like it was necessary. I get what you're saying, Sarah. Yeah. And I, I I, think I appreciate it a little more with that lens. But like, I feel like I would have liked her to have heard the child make a choice to go forward and say, I have to move on with my life. Like, I, I'm going to carry this with me, but I have to keep moving. I can't stay down here anymore in hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to make the choice to survive, and then maybe we sh- we just leave her sort of hyperventilating on the side of the road because it's like we're not okay, but we're we're still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Or you could have all through all four of them in the car, just hanging out, just eating ghost popcorn, just yeah. like <laughs> her husband, her daughter, and Ju- Juno and her, just That's all in the car. Fucking... Oof! That's terrifying. That is that terrifying. Would be rough. Um. Okay, final thoughts on the descent. If you've got any. Uh, uh overall, re- really Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you go first. Really um entertaining. I lo- lo- loved it when it came out. Um mm-hmm. I think that I don't love it as much anymore just cuz I like tastes have changed and like mm-hmm. there are so many much better films now, I guess, mm-hmm. but um, but I still really do ap- appreciate it, and um, and I'm glad that I got to, s- to see it again. Yeah. Um, I uh, you go ahead, Melissa. You go ahead. Yeah. Overall, I still I still like this film. I love the fact that I'm still screaming at it. Mm-hmm. Um, the characters still frustrate me. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge visual person, so the fact that the monsters are just so freaking fantastic. I thought fantastic. the visuals of this movie in general are really just, spe- uh, spectacular. Yeah, yeah, the way it was shot, mm-hmm. um, some of the scenes just it just draws you in, mm-hmm. and I really appreciate that in any film because it's hard to do. Um, so overall, I just I still really really enjoy this film. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the second movie? Because I really love to hear a little bit about that. <laughs> I apologize in advance for anybody. Uh, who did this film? Um, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I heard it, it's not good. She lived. Okay, so is she in the second movie? So she's in the second oh, movie. She's the shit. star of the second movie. Okay. Um, Wait. She has amnesia in the hospital. I want to look up whether Neil Marshall was involved. I don't think he was, but you keep talking. It didn't feel like it, but maybe. I don't know. Amnesia. Um, she had amnesia. There's this really shitty sheriff who makes her go back in the cave and he's like this older guy that they just make a dick um and he did a great job at being a dick but it was just like being a dick just for the sake of having that character like it just didn't work Mm -hmm. and she's like is like kind of like juno in the second one as in she's just full survival mode fuck everyone 
There is another but woman go, in it. An- they go back in the cave? They go back in the cave because Juno is like the daughter of a big senator or somebody Wait, and he wants his daughter back. Does she go back in the cave? She does because she doesn't remember what happened. Oh, and what? there's like this old guy like it has this setup as like you know you know like in a horror movie where it's like the the older guy at the gas station doomsday kind of feel. oh like spread they those. have an older oh, guy back that, in the cave that puts them down in the mine because there's a mine um shaft and he sends them down he does like a little wink at them and it's like oh great so like the, nobody's making it out um this sounds fucking terrible it's awful. She starts to get her memory back in mm. the cave, and that's a bad place to it, get those memories back. Just awful. And there's this, um, the one woman of color in the second mm-hmm. one uh, is like a fan. She's a mom, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she's just an awesome lady. And um, Sarah does try to help her get out of the cave, right? She ends up sacrificing herself at the very end so that she can get out to her family, to her daughter. Okay, but. When you get to the, you're not going to watch this, so I'm just going to ruin No, all please of it. do. Spoilers um, for The Descent 2. So everybody dies, right? Okay. Except for um, the one woman, mm-hmm. the one little sheriff. Uh, she gets out. The creepy old guy from the beginning, she's like, finally gets out. She's like looking at her phone or something. She's looking around. This old guy jumps out of nowhere, hits her in the head with, I don't know, a shovel or something, and then throws her by the cave opening. And that's where they leave it. I was like, so he and knows about the creatures. Is are they like, his pets? I don't know. Perhaps it it's like make, he's got like they a don't giant give you boa constrictor. Ca- uh, any tank. idea of why this old guy is doing this? And I keep saying that, and that's rude. But I, they don't give any idea why this guy uh, is doing this. Well, Neil yeah. Marshall was not involved, so different writer it was and director. Terrible, but it does have this. Um, actor in it that I absolutely love and oh, he was in Once Upon a yes, Time I just and I forget that. his name, his name but I love 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 him Josh Dallas yes and I yeah. love him as an actor he's a cutie um, patootie and he, yeah and he did a great job in it it's just it's just the actual film <laughs> well I don't think I'll be bad. watching it because that sounds terrible. So is there a man in her life, this this film? Yeah, does she have a man in her no, life? No, because it's literally like right after. the day after. Okay. okay. What? And they drag her back down into the I cave. don't see why they would. It seems like she'd need some therapy or something. I don't know. That seems insane. This is it's angering. Really, it's just this doesn't make sense. And me. Juno's alive, by the way. What? Juno did not die. Well, then why is but she... Does she... But does she die in, in, in this one? Yeah, she dies in the second one. Oh, so um, they get her good this time. Yeah, so the, like her and Sarah like start to work together towards the end, and then they both end up. Die. Yeah, it's really I don't know. It's too much. No. Okay, no. well we'll be that? watching that, or I might I just, because I'm a I'm I'm a glutton for punishment. We'll watch it. I mean, I, I sometimes mean, least... like stuff that's shitty and cheesy just for kicks. You watch no. it and tell so me. So it's not how it's you not feel. bad in a good way, even. No. Oh, okay. Well, like they made it so cheesy that they like that hole was a toilet, like. Yeah, that's bad. We, I, nobody needed to explain what that hole was. We don't need to know. Yeah, you know, we don't like. Need he came in and that. he did this thing where he like looked around, even though they're blind. Mm. And then and maybe he's listening. I don't know. I mean, I and always. Took a shit. I usually look around before I take a shit. You, but he, you know, I like to be alone. Like, I like to be alone. It was weird. Like, I don't know. I don't imagine those monsters have like a toilet. I don't know. It just seemed weird. Or just maybe not. Where they eat their food. Because isn't that where all the also, bones are? Also, those girls were in that hole when it came into <laughs> Gross. Don't like it. I was laughing at that. It was don't, so stupid. Don't like it. Um, well, I have to say that this movie holds up for me. Um, I do maintain that I wish that the characters had been a little more developed towards that beginning. Don't know if I need to see any more movies about women fighting over a man. Uh, unless it's like really really a new take on it um but i will say that i after finishing it today i was like wow i forgot how fucking good that is like that is a good fucking movie and it and and Mm -hmm. uh it may be uh maybe a little horror staple for me on the octobers yeah all right you guys ready to do the bechtel test yes okay all right so i feel like this is gonna be pretty easy um Mm -hmm. does this movie have more than one female character yes yep uh do those women talk to each other do they have Mm -hmm. names do they have names they do have names it was a little hard Mm -hmm. at first for me to 
all the Rebecca's and then and the, the Beth's and the it was a little hard for me at first, but I got Sam it. Sam and the and the Juno and the Sarah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of generic like names. generic names. Yeah, not that I mean I do the same thing, so I'm at fault as well giving people generic names. Uh, and do they talk to each other? Yes, sure do. And do they talk about something other than a man? Yes, they yeah. do. So even if the dialogue isn't always fully realistic i feel like uh, as to how women would talk to each other i feel like this movie is about female relationships uh and uh i feel like this movie absolutely more than passes the bechtel test yeah welcome to plug it up uh this is the part of the show where we talk about stuff that we're working on that besides this podcast um, and uh, stuff that our guests are working on. So you can check out all the cool things that they're doing. Uh, let's start with our guest, Melissa. Yeah. So, well, actually you worked on this as well. Scarecrow's first Halloween, yes. a short anthology uh, film written by Stacey Palmer. Mm -hmm. And I directed and acted in one mm -hmm. of the uh, segments and mm -hmm. you ran sound on it. I did. You can find that on Facebook. I believe there's a Facebook page, Scarecrow's First Halloween. And you can also find it if you look for Lobster Girl Productions. That's Stacy's production company. Awesome. And I'm also a guest juror. So I'll be selecting the films for awards for the Renegade Film Festival, nice. which was previously known as Women in Horror Film Festival. It screens here in... March of 2022 in Georgia, and it's ran it. by Vanessa Ayanta Wright and Marissa Pana. It is a great film festival. I just can't say enough good things about it. It is. It's awesome. the uh, the sh The pr uh, programming is great. The organizers are really awesome people, and they always have really cool guests too. Mm -hmm. Um, and they've got. Uh, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to be biased, but I think they've got pretty <laughs> awesome judges as well. You know. You know. Um, okay, so check out the Renegade Film Festival, and they're accepting submissions still as still, well. Absolutely, on yeah, film on Film Free Ray. Uh, and also check out Scarecrow's First Halloween, uh, which is going to be very cool. Um, Sarah, what would you like to plug? Um, well, I have this new Instagram account. It's uh, going to be a bop, bop, bop. Body positivity clothing may 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 makeup account. Um, basically, I have too many clothes and makeup to know what to do with, other than share it. Sounds and great. And I figured I would also throw in some stories of my personal jur 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 journey with uh, any an eating disorder, extreme weight gain, late weight loss. Um, I just think that. Um, Hopefully, some 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 other people can relate, and it might help other people to hear th that store store story. I don't know. I think um, that's amazing. I, I love I this idea. And frankly, I've been telling you for years that all I want is a montage of you wearing different outfits. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I always love beautiful. your makeup looks. You know that I always I'm like Thank so you. jealous that you can do makeup Aww. like that. It's so just beautiful. I love it. Yeah, I feel Thanks like this account that. is personally tailored to my interests. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yes. Well, I will I I was about to put on make makeup today, but I was feeling feeling gloomy today, so I didn't I didn't put on make ma ma Well, ma you look makeup, gorgeous. But... Well, Alre you. Already. So, love it. Um, <laughs> and what's the Instagram handle again? Oh, yes. It is um hedge ha ha hodges underscore bod pause. So that's H E D G E H O D G E S underscore B O D P O S. Love I'm it. a spelling whiz. You are a spelling whiz. You're going to get so used to spitting out. <laughs> it's going to be like me spitting out all these, uh, uh, you know, handles for our <laughs> shows. Uh, you're going to get, you're just, it's going to come out naturally. Um, cool. All right. So everybody check out uh, hedge hodges underscore body pause, right? Or bod pause. Bod pause. Bod pause. Bod pause. Um, okay. Well, I would like to plug a uh, critical crop top uh, who uh, critical crop top, of course, produces this podcast amongst other things, including this critical crop top sketch comedy web show, which the three of us all wrote and directed and acted in. Uh, and we <laughs> shot it virtually during the pandemic, which was an interesting experience. Um, and all those episodes are now up on our YouTube channel, as well as Instagram and Facebook. So you can watch them all over the place. Uh, so, um, at critical crop top, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can find us on YouTube, just 
as Critical Crop Top. Um, you can also watch the vidcast of this podcast there, um, as well as a lot of other stuff like sketches we've done. And there's like, I want to, there's like 200 videos up there now, guys. It's kind of insane. Wow. Um, I've been just steadily do they have a cap? archiving. Do they things. have like a YouTube channel cap? They're like, you can only do 500 vi- vi- videos. Yeah. I don't know. We I haven't hit the, so. we haven't hit it yet. So, uh, go check out our YouTube channel. We've got all vidcasts of our podcasts and we've got, uh, sketches and stuff. And so there's some, some fun things there. Um, and, uh, also, uh, the po- other podcast, Sarah, that I, and I do, if you are, uh, into that absurd nonsense, uh, we do another show called the Adam and Andy podcast. Uh, where we watch all Adam Driver movies and Andy Samberg movies and TV shows and stuff. So uh, right now we're watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine season eight. And I think by the time this show comes out, we will have already released, I think, our last duel episode. So we will have watched Adam Driver in the last duel. Um, Sarah, you look like you wanted to add something to that. No, I'm just saying, ooh, like that, that CAD. I know, that CAD. <laughs> that CAD. Um, so if you want to hear Sarah and I argue over how, whether Sarah thinks Adam Driver's actually tall or not, um, mm-hmm. I'm on the side of he's very large, and Sarah's like, I don't know, could be larger. He's, he's okay. This he's is the- <laughs> smallish, tallish. He's, he's regular. I, wow. I get, wow. He's fun I, size. Wow. Just kidding. He's not fun size. Um, this is the kind of quality content that you can find on that <laughs> Ben Andy podcast. Uh, so check us out. Uh, more of the same. If you enjoy listening to us, we do that show as well. Um, and of course, we would love to hear from you about what you thought about the descent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are what did you think about the? Are these the? Is the dialogue realistic in this movie for women? Uh, is this is just a series of bad choices? Is it fate? Uh, did Juno? deserve it uh i don't know you you tell us monsters worth it were the monsters worth it i'm just kidding (laughs) were the monsters necessary narratively uh you can can let us know what you think um and uh, of course you can find us on facebook and instagram at feminine mistake pod and you can find us on twitter at fem mistake pod um guys i always have the best time with you both um i think the hollow the october episodes of the show are always my favorites i always look forward to it now i'm like oh it's almost time almost time it's time to get out the the warm hot cocoa and our pumpkins by the way guys my neighborhood just fully decided that it's halloween already like in september i love that my neighborhood was like it's fucking halloween if christmas can be two months long so can halloween and my pumpkins like, are already out on the front porch yes they, it's a, like what's today like middle of september they were out and we didn't take down some of the Halloween decorations from last year, to be honest. Nice. So. Sarah, are you, are you and Sam going to be decorating? Carve a pumpkin. <gasps> yes. But are you guys going to be decorating for Halloween? I don't know. I you think we should save my, my, my money. We get both, a nine maybe foot one room. Ske- get a nine foot skeleton. She's trying to make you spend money right now. Get a nine foot <laughs> skeleton. Decorate one room. Dollar Somebody store one room. Give me a nine foot skeleton, please. <laughs> uh, if Put you that like, on your Christmas <laughs> list. Sarah. Send us some money. <laughs> Feminine Mistake Podcast at gmail.com. Send us some money so Sarah can buy a nine foot skeleton. Sarah's Halloween fun. <laughs> I would donate to that. I would donate. Um, just think about it, though, Sarah. You could put some Christmas lights on him, and at Christmas time, he could be a Christmas skeleton. Oh, oh yes. Ooh, what would our Nate? Na- if you na- don't na- decorate, na- the kids won't come by your house. Well, actually, you won't be there, well, so it we won't matter. Be, we won't be there. Yeah, you'll be hanging out with my kids. Mm-hmm. So we, Sarah and I always, uh, Sarah always comes and hangs out with my kids. I will trick or treat with your kids, even when they're too old to tr- trick or treat. I'll be like, yes. we're going trick or treating. Yes, I know you're. I, hope they- I know you're 18, but I know. No, it's like we're going <laughs> trick or treating, and you're gonna bring mom back some candy. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, it's been a blast, guys. Uh, thanks, Melissa, for being on the show. Thanks, ladies. Uh, and thank you, you listeners. Uh, thanks for listening. Know.